Hello everyone, this is May 26th and 27th of the 2018 Kilauea eruption. This episode we're going to redo May 27th and add a little bit more to it. Let's get into it. Overnight, the lava flow from Fissure 21 and 7 continues to advance to the north, encroaching upon the Puna Geothermal Venture. Meanwhile, Fissure 8 is reactivating with intermittent activity. It's not very vigorous, but it is there. It is turning back on throughout the night. Early morning on the 26th, we see that the lava flow from Fissure 7 and Fissure 21 is yet to cross the Poeiki Road. We also have the activity just up rift of it to the right, that's Fissure 8, as well as activity further down rift, which is still feeding the ocean entries. At this point in time, there's still two of them. So in Leilani Estates, we have a decent amount of people that are viewing the lava. By this point in time, the placard system has been in effect, and to get into Leilani Estates, you have to show proof of residency in some capacity. So there's not a ton of people crawling around, but even the people that are there, some of them are getting ticketed by the police for parking and other weird little nuanced uh, ways to basically keep people from going and looking at the lava. And even if you took 10, 15 minutes while you're evacuating to go do it, you might get ticketed for it. At the same time, the media is being brought in and given special access in many ways to certain spots where they can take video and record to run on the news. It's really weird because at the same time that it's overzealous against very specific residents, it's laissez-faire against others. And we just have to deal with it as things transition at this point in the eruption into the reign of Fisher 8. This video is taken from one of the homes that is on Poeiki Road with a large uh -uh lava flow advancing to the north. And this lava flow is going to continue advancing throughout the day. Activity on the 26th is mostly consistent. We do have some activity emerging at Fisher 8 with some light spatter. It's not producing a large lava flow at this point but it still gives a sense that lava is transitioning further up the rift. And I remember this point in the eruption clearly because I was thinking that the lava is coming from the mid part of Leilani Estates that is yet untouched by the lava flows. And that's where my home is. So we were evacuating everything that wasn't nailed down. Mostly because of the lava, but also because of looters. There were people going around looting in Leilani Estates as well as other neighborhoods around the eruption site. Taking advantage of people in their time of need and that was you know heartbreaking in and of itself but it was also part of the reason why the placard system and the police presence was being implemented in Leilani Estates. Transitioning into May 27th we see the lava flow that was coming from Fisher 21 and 7 cross Poeiki Road at roughly 4 p.m. the previous day and has been slowly encroaching upon the Puna Geothermal Venture. Now the power plant is slightly elevated from its surrounding. It's positioned on a very old cinder cone and it is slightly protected in that regard so that lava isn't just rushing onto the property and inundating it like some other areas. This aerial footage from Mick Calber on his morning overflight shows something else with the lava flow that's moving towards PGV and that's how it's being what appears to be constrained by the previous eruptive vents cutting across Poeiki Road. At the time, I was thinking that the lava flow was trying to wrap around the Kahukai Kipuka, this elevated hill that is now just a small island of untouched land. And it's trying to wrap around that, but instead hit the barrier and started pooling and then encroaching upon PGV moving slightly uphill. Lava continued to accumulate on the southern end of the power plant and encroach further and further in, claiming a couple wells, covering them entirely, as well as evaporating this pool of water being stored near the well pads. If we look here at Fisher 7 and Fisher 21 with Fisher 8 behind it, we have this large amount of lava that is accumulating and ponding around the bases, feeding lava flows that are slowly moving to the east and the flow that's moving to the north. There is just a large amount of lava here 
and you can see just how much the ground has risen up from the previous elevations. It's probably like 40 to 50 feet deep already, the thickness of the lava on top of the old land. This video from USGS shows Fisher 7, which is probably the most active fishers across these two days, until we go into the night of May 27th when Fisher 8 reactivates and Fisher 23 turns on as well, a night that we would call Hell Night, the night that would change the course of the eruption and how it was perceived by the people on the ground, as well as the authorities that were trying to oversee the ongoing disaster. As the night came on the 27th, hell was truly unleashed upon Leilani Estates. Fisher 8 and Fisher 23 started putting down new lava flows that were fast moving. One of the biggest, most voluminous parts of the eruption that we've seen so far happens in part of the neighborhood that has yet to be covered by lava. There's going to be dozens and dozens of homes lost this night. We see here as lava is moving down Luana Street and this is a common occurrence that we've seen throughout the eruption. Lava takes the path of least resistance and usually that ends up being a road. To the north of Fisher 23, in the path of the lava flow, there was a large ground crack that predated the eruption. Now, these types of cracks are fairly common throughout Leilani Estates. It is in the rift zone and the ground has the trademarks of previous volcanic eruptions. This is one of them. And lava began pouring into the ground crack at roughly late afternoon and began filling it up. By 10 p.m., the lava coming from Fisher 23 pouring into the ground crack had almost filled it entirely. It would overtop the ground crack in the coming hours. As the activity, though, at Fisher 23 waned away, the ground crack began draining the lava within it. Eventually, all of the lava within it would be drained back somewhere into the earth. This is what it looked like that night on the ground. This is the scene as hell swept through the subdivision. This was the first night that I had heard the mayor come over the airwaves on the scanner and started issuing orders directly to first responders. And they were in a rough position because many of the guys that were being tasked with going into the subdivision in the parts that were about to be inundated weren't familiar with the area. These are cops that have been brought in on overtime from other parts of the island to assist. They're the ones that were going in. So there was a great deal of unknowns for them that they were just in an unfamiliar area with an absolutely chaotic scene happening. And there is some additional stories that come about from that. One story that night that Hawaii Tractor was directly involved in focused on a man on the Wana Street that became somewhat trapped by the lava flows and had to escape through the jungle to try and get out of the way of the lava. Now, we started calling the neighbors that we know in Leilani Estates that were down slope of the lava flow and telling them what was happening. And he really didn't believe us. He was uh, skeptical and stubborn and basically waited until the lava had cut across his driveway and taken out his easiest ways out of his property. So then he calls the authorities who then bring in a drone team to assist and they end up guiding him out of the subdivision while he's sitting there on the phone talking to the dispatcher. The dispatcher's relaying the messages to the drone team and the first responders on the ground. It really was a chaotic scene. That will do it for May 26th and May 27th from the 2018 eruption. I wanted to show a little bit more in this episode of May 27th. I have already done one cut of May 27th. That was the very first Drones On episode that was posted on Hawaii Pod. That episode was very basic compared to the rest of the series. So I wanted to go back and redo the 27th because it was such an important night and there was so much that the original cut overlooked or just didn't have time to mention. So I thank you for joining me. Until the next one, aloha.